sitting here with one of my favorite people in Hollywood, Mr. Dondre Whitfield. Yes, sir. I have to say, brother, you've been an actor for years, but I found out through the grapevine over there <laughs> that you're doing comedy. So I wanted to sit down and talk to you. First thing before we even get into that, man, what was the maturation in a thought process that you decided, let me start thinking about doing acting and then doing comedy? You know, honestly, I think I, I've sort of always had it in me for a long time. I mean, my first professional job was on the Cosby Show, mm -hmm. and being around Mr. Cosby was like super inspirational. Watching his stand-up or his sit-down, mm -hmm. <laughs> because when he did his stand-up, he did it sitting down. Um, and then having every stand-up comedian uh, in town as a, an acquaintance or as a good friend, like you know our our friend Chris Spencer. Mm -hmm. and David Arnold, mm -hmm. Alex Thomas, and um, and guys like that who, you know, I'd be the only actor in a room full of comics, and, you know, we'd go back and forth killing each other, and I'm the only actor in the room. Mm -hmm. Then there'd be times where some of them would actually call me when they're writing jokes and ask me to help them punch up something. Uh -huh. And then I'd give it to them, and then one day Chris said to me, he said, man, when you gonna stop playing? When, when, you, when you gonna get on stage? And you know, we just want, I never wanted to touch the stage if I didn't feel like I had something to really give to it. I had too much respect for this as a craft and as an art. And one day, I remember uh, for New Year's, Chris, you know how you call all your boys, you're like, hey man, all right, we're gonna do it this year, this is it. And I called Chris and Chris said, okay, listen, he goes, if I don't see you on stage this year, we're going to fight. And I said, I'm way ahead of you. And, and uh, I got together with, uh, with David Arnold and, and went through his class and then went through mentorship with, with Chris. We actually did a couple of dates at a couple of casinos out of town and everything. And it has just been fantastic. I can't even describe. It's like no other high I've ever had in my life. Well, let's go back. First of all, just going from acting to stand-up is a big leap. Now, I would have thought the normal process would have been from acting to maybe writing, maybe trying to figure out doing com comedy on film, but to go from writing, and I mean from acting and to doing stand-up, can you explain the, the connect there? Like, I mean, literally, to say, I have enough courage. I'm not an actor. Everything is laid out. But now, you know, usually stand-up comedians it usually works the opposite. It usually you stand up comedian and then that moves into being an actor. And I think that was one of the things that made me hesitant about even trying my hand at it because I had a legitimate acting to career mm -hmm. and who goes from having a legitimate acting career to doing stand up? It's almost like going backwards, right? Right, but at the same time for me, it felt genuine because um, I didn't think of it as uh, something that, that I was doing as a, like, as a career choice in terms of you know, making a, a leap or making a climb. It, for me, it, it, f it was something that I needed to have in order to be able to, to get out all the stuff that's, it, that's in me every single day. Mm -hmm. The way I see the world, the way I see marriage, the way I see friendships, the way I see fatherhood, the way I see the industry. Um, the way I see being uh, a black man, the way I see being, you know, growing up in a, in a neighborhood where, you know, I was light skinned and curly, ha you know, haired and, and what that meant. Um, so for me, it was another outlet for my own creativity. And I just love it because it's pure. I get to be the actor, the producer, the director. And if it works, it's all on me. If it doesn't work, it's all on me. Right. So now that, have you, that you have been a stand up comic, has it not worked a couple of times? It's, you know what, I've, thank goodness, I've never had like a night where, you know, um, cause you always hear about, you know, stand up comics going, hey look man, you know, you're just gonna have that night where you just bomb. Mm -hmm. I've never had a night where I've bombed. There's always um, a couple of rooms where, uh, I've always run into certain situations or certain rooms where people are mesmerized by the fact that Here's this actor that, I, that I've known for so long who's done the Cosby Show, who's done All My Children, who's done Girlfriends and these movies that I watch, and now he's doing stand-up. How do I feel about that? You know, so for the first, like, three minutes, everybody's sort of stuck and frozen and going. And then after that, 
once they get a chance to hear what's going on, then they get invested in them. So the, for the first three minutes, depending on what kind of room I'm in, first three minutes, particularly when I'm in a room and it's just our folks. If I'm in a room where it's white folks, it's completely different. They're with me right from the opening tip. Like they just, it's neutral. They just see me as a guy or as an actor, but it's not the same. With our folks, it's like, I know this guy as Robert. I know this guy as Terrence. I know this guy as Sean, a sex addict on the, you know, so how do I feel about this stand up thing? Once they get past that and they really do hear, then I got the rule. Okay, now let me ask you this. I mean, now that you know what you know from, from the other side, <coughs> how is it joining and saying, okay, I want to do this stuff now to apply it with what I know? You know, it's really, my acting actually helps my, my, my stand-up comedy because I get to go in and out of characters with ease. So things that stand-up comedians struggle with on stage are natural to me because you know, I'm an actor. So I, I know about that level of commitment. There's also a level of being able to be prepared when I go on stage, even when I'm trying out new material. Certain stand-up comedian, comedians go out and they just, they come up with a couple of things and they try it on the, sp or, you know, on the spot. Whereas I'm so used to being prepared as an actor, even when I'm trying new material, I have a really good idea of exactly how I'm gonna start and how I'm gonna get there. There's stuff that happens when you, you know, when you're in the middle of it that you don't anticipate mm -hmm. and that's the improvisational side, which is great. But as an actor, I'm, I'm, I'm prepared. So now you got some projects. Ha you have to, having all that knowledge, you have to have some projects that you can just foresee, that you can tell everybody out there that, you know, this is where you're thinking about leaning towards. Well, I've honestly, uh, a couple of nights ago, I, I really had a strong calling to, to do a one-man one -man show. Mm -hmm. um, this, this would obviously be able to, to blend my stand-up comedy along with my acting and uh, and I think it would be powerful because my life has really truly been powerful. All the things that I've been through from growing up where I grew up in, in, in Brooklyn and, and you know, people have seen me as an actor be very polished, right. but growing up, my life was completely contrary to that. Mm -hmm. and, and that's one thing that people really are surprised to hear about. Um, I boxed for 12 years. Um, I've done Krav Maga. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of different layers to, you know, I've raced motorcycles. I used to do stunts on my motorcycles, wheelies, endos, right. all kinds of, you know, I scuba dive. I do, you know, there's a bunch of stuff that I do that people would be really surprised to hear about or to even see me do. Mm -hmm. So having all those life experiences and being able to put that kind of stuff on stage will make for a really powerful one man show. So you must be telling us something that we should be expecting. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, in, ra in wrapping this up, man, can you tell everybody out there what projects that you have besides that possible one-man show that you can tell everybody out there and then tell them how we can follow you? Well, uh, I'm, I've been doing a, a show for ABC called Mistresses. Uh, Alyssa M Milano is the lead on the show, but I'm playing uh, opposite Rochelle Eights for all you guys out there. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> when my wife says an actress is beautiful, you know she's beautiful. She's like, who are you, who are you working opposite with? I'm like, Rochelle H. She's like, wow. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, uh, and I'm about to do a, uh, a project uh, for Tracy Edmonds uh, opposite Michael K. Williams, uh, who is on uh, Boardwalk Empire. Right. And you can follow me at, at Dondre Whitfield on Twitter and all Dondre on Instagram, all that good stuff. Thank you for taking out the time. Yes, sir, always.